I'm Gabor Vida, and welcome to another episode of The Embedded, an ongoing exploration of the space between the glass and the technology. And today, we have uh, a special guest. His name's Andrew Penny. He's the president of Kingsford Consulting, also the president of the Network Vehicle Association. Andrew, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Oh, nice great to, to be you. here. So tell us a, a bit more about the Network Vehicle Association. Well, the Network Vehicle Association was formed about four years ago. Uh, I was at a conference between uh, some folks that BMW had got together and various players from the automotive sector. And uh, they were sort of having a future conversation. And it struck me very quickly that the, the automotive folks tend to think in five, six, ten-year planning cycles and cutting steel and long-term processes. And the, the people in the digital community are thinking of, uh, you know, next month or even next week as to what they're going to be doing in technology, staying fluid and flexible and uh, a lot of experimentation and putting things into the marketplace. And you really had two, two solitudes almost where the, the automotive guys um, didn't dare to think in those short terms. And the, 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 uh, the technical digital folks realized they were going to have four careers by the time the next model was produced. Right. So how do you bridge those two solitudes, as it were? Right. So we created the association to give uh, executives from both the automotive sector and the technology sector uh, as, a, as a forum to come and discuss common needs, common interests. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been very, very interesting over the last uh, four years. We've had a number of conference, conferences uh, in Canada and the U.S. Mm -hmm. Uh, bringing together just about everybody you can think of, from insurance companies to carriers to operators to OEMs, uh, European, North American, Asian, and uh, having some, not a lot of real answers, shall we say, but I think what's happening is that the two groups are starting to understand each other better, mm -hmm. and some of the, the technology and the development activity that's happening is, is, I think, being seeded by some of the conversations we've been having. So that's that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah, it, it seems like that that's a uh, it's a natural fit. You know, the people um, uh, they have they, they've surrounded their their world around the device that's in their pocket, their smartphone. You know, and it holds their their music and their communications. And uh, when they get into their vehicle, that's their world as well. I mean, we're we're a car based society, and they want that experience in their car. You know, it it seems to me that 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 the uh, even having a, a screen, as soon as you have a screen on a car, now I want my music, I want my, my applications, my, my phone, my connection and all that. So um, it's a natural fit, but it sounds like it's not that easy. It's not, it's not that easy to just say, yep, no problem. Here's the, the experience that's in here. We're going to stick it onto, on, onto the screen in your car. Is, is that the case? Well, I think technologically, it, it would be possible, but mm -hmm. I think there's a fundamental difference in, in philosophy and approach. Mm -hmm. um, if you go back 40 years, we defined ourselves, or many of us did, we defined ourselves by our car. Mm -hmm. You right. know, you're a Buick guy, you're a Absolutely. Mustang guy, you're yeah. a Cadillac guy, yeah. you're a you know, VW bug guy. Right. You know, and I say guy because right. it was a, a very much a male culture in those sure. days. So that was, that was kind of uh, how the automotive industry evolved. Uh, and those roots are still there driving today's cars. Mm -hmm. But when people market today's cars, it's not so much about the car anymore. It's mm -hmm. about the sound system. It's about right. the funky color. It's about right. the spinning rims. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you put spinning rims on a, I know, a, a Boss Mustang or something sure. in, the, in the 60s, you know, people would laugh at you. There's nothing cool about that at all. There's yeah. nothing macho or individualistic. Yeah. So that car culture has continued along and I think many of the automotive manufacturers are saying, well, why, why aren't people excited by our cars anymore? Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this cool engine, we've got whatever. Mm -hmm. So the, the um, pioneer individual uh, image of, of a hot car mm -hmm. is, is really not relevant anymore. Right. And I don't know that everybody in the automotive world gets it. Now, some of the, the bleeding edge, you know, sports vehicles, you know, BMW is a great example. You know, it's about the experience and they do make a driver's car. But you look at the, you know, um, does anybody get excited about driving their Kia or, mm -hmm. or some of the other, um, you know, almost uh, homogenous mass of cars that have right. come out now to satisfy people who just want to get from A to B. Yeah. So there's a shift there on the automotive side. And on the personal device side, people do define themselves by their apps. It's more common now to see a bunch of people looking at their apps and going, wow, what does yours do? Well, mine does that. Oh, I got a, how many tunes? Well, I've got like a billion tunes in the cloud because right. I have subscribed to them. Yeah. As opposed to, hey, that's a, you know, a 
18 or, or 18 valve, seven cylinder, you know, with an overdrive, with a Hemi, or whatever. Exactly. You know, they don't talk right. about the car anymore. Right. It's about their device. Right. So that's the individualism. Mm -hmm. So I think, in a, in a way, the automotive industry has come down, mm -hmm. and the the it's called the digital industry mm -hmm. has taken supremacy. Right. And how do we merge the two? That's yeah. the question. Who's, who's this going to affect, you think? You think it'll uh, affect the device manufacturers? Or, or are we really talking more about um, the first step to bridge this gap is, is uh, uh, found maybe in the applications more than, more than the actual hardware itself? I think it's partly applications, but I think what, what everybody in, in the industry has to recognize is about content. Now you got to display it properly, and you got to display it the right way in the right place. Mm -hmm. But it is about the content, and uh, organizing the content in such a way that that uh, it's available to the individual. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, I'm, I'm not a car driver. I'm not a commuter. I'm not an office worker. You know, I'm, I'm the same person, and I want my information. I want access to my world. Mm -hmm. I just want to display the right way wherever I am. Right. You know that's that's from a from a cloud content point of view. Um, so so how do we how do we stitch that together? Um, I, I think the you know I'm stumbling for words. I don't know the answer, but I think right. it's it's the a combination of the the automotive industry has to understand where it can play. The device manufacturers have to understand what they contribute to it. Mm -hmm. The application developers have to understand how they fit in. Mm -hmm. And then underneath all of that is, is a huge cloud of content right. that is bubbling to get out in the right places. And perhaps it's through conferences like ours that, that those conversations can happen and, and we'll find the, the first steps out in that new direction. Well, I know one of the key things that, uh, that launched the kind of the application revolution on, on devices and, and on the web um, started with standards you know it's mm -hmm. standard ways to describe data standard ways to uh, 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 present data uh, to work with data um, allowed applications to look and act the same across different browsers across different devices across mm -hmm. uh, you know to be packaged into applications um, is there is there a push towards standardization uh, uh, in the auto industry, and is that is there frankly kind of a, a a desire not to standardize so that you 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 stay in your brand kind of a thing? Well, the automotive companies, uh, automotive manufacturers, really work with the IEEE, so the the um, electronic standards inside a vehicle are pretty well documented, mm -hmm. uh, really from a safety point of view. So when you look at a vehicle, there's kind of a firewall between the stuff we can play with. So, you know, the smart screen or, or lighting systems or whatever, you can kind of get into that. But then once you get um, into the vehicle proper, there's sort of a firewall. So you don't want to have your, um, your iTunes library interfering with your ABS. Right or uh, yeah. with the timing on the engine, or the fuel efficiency, or any of the safety features. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a legitimate uh, fear and concern that mm -hmm. we've got to be careful how far we let the digital outside digital world into the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Also, though, automotive manufacturers, they like to standardize, but typically they'll standardize across their own brand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know the, 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 the BMW's brakes are, are better than, you know, Company X brakes and, and so-and-so's transmission's better than somebody else's. So there's kind of an in-house uh, strategy there. And I fear that they're going to try and do the same sort of thing with the, the digital expression inside their vehicles, right. which, would be, which would be folly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, what's happened in, in, the, uh, in the digital world, standards of what uh, has made it happen, particularly when you get into, into the web world where you've got all the open standards that, that drive the growth. Mm -hmm. So uh, th there will be a standards battle there. I think some of the emerging car manufacturers get it. Mm -hmm. They don't have the legacy of, of um, you know, capital investment and, and whatever and engineering in the right. old way of doing things. And they're, they're going to take the cost advantages of just being open and getting on with it and differentiating on cleverness, not standard. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a, there's an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. As we can see, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of paths that we can go down. Mm -hmm. Are there some people that are, or some companies that are really doing it well so far? I think the obvious example is Ford. Mm -hmm. um, they, they took a bold leap forward with the Ford Sync product uh, and it sold a ton of cars for them. Right. Uh, and they've extended, I think now, to just 
almost every vehicle in their fleet. You know, prior to that, uh, GM had the OnStar capability, which was kind of a, a novel thing, and they've, again, they've moved that through to most of their vehicles. And interestingly for Ford, they've now offered it to um, not only other manufacturers, but as an individual, you can buy a wing mirror clip-on or a mirror clip-on, and now you can have OnStar. Yeah. So it's sort of a standard in a way. So that's clever. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Ford Sync has done a good job, as I said. Mm -hmm. uh, BMW has done some clever things with, uh, with their design and their vehicles. But they're all little points of light moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, go back to the early days of the PC. It's a kind of a parallel as, as things evolve. Right, right, yeah. I, you talk about being able to stick a, a suction cup on, the, on my iPhone and stick it on the screen. That's what I want, though. You know, I want, yeah, you want I, I, I almost want a dock. You and, want the iPhone experience wherever you are, right. relevant to whatever you're doing at the time. Exactly. I don't, I don't yeah. want the full experience. Yeah. I want it pared down to my driving version. Now, now there's experience. another side to, to the whole um, intelligent or, or um, uh, network vehicle side of it. Part of it is the entertainment, information, convenience uh, side of it. Mm -hmm. But there is a very serious safety side of it. Mm -hmm. So when you look at um, the whole vehicle fleet, there are visions out there now of, you know, look at Toronto. There's, uh, what, um, 20 million cars or something mm -hmm. in, the, in, in uh, Ontario, and half mm -hmm. of them are in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And if you're trying to get from one side of Toronto to the other, you're, you're one guy sort of fighting everything to get through every street and stop sign to get the other side of the city, right. fighting everybody else. Right. And so are the other million cars on the road. Right. Now, if there was a way to have all of those vehicles think as one system, mm -hmm. It would make more sense, perhaps, for you to let those two cars cut in front of you because you'll get where you're going faster because, because, because. Mm -hmm. And the technology is there to do that now where each vehicle is connected into a, into a, a, a system, a cloud, right. that manages the full efficiency of everybody. Um, the ability to drive two feet behind the car in front of you at 100 kilometers an hour is there safely. There are mm -hmm. tests in Holland now where they're actually having ad hoc trains of cars moving down the highway <laughs> a couple of meters apart. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all there. So there's, there's that part of the intelligent and connected vehicle as well that you need to think about. Mm -hmm. So the, the automotive manufacturer is looking at the what they see as infotainment on one side, so nav systems and, and radios and music and phone conversations, but they're also looking at this um, infrastructure management, uh, car flow efficiency, safety thing, right. which is a whole different infrastructure right. that needs to be adapted as well. Mm -hmm. And both of them are giving information to the car, so which one gets presented, how and when, and how do you put it all together. Right, right. So it's a, it's a, it's a real soup. It's not just a <laughs> two-way conversation. Sure. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. That sounds like a, a lot of uh, uh, complication, but definitely some interesting useful things coming up oh, in the future. Oh, fantastic stuff going to happen. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of the future, what's next? What's next for you and what's next for the, the, the Network Vehicle Association? Well, we continue having our conversations and, and it seems, uh, you know, every year we, we have a sort of a, a reach a new level, a new breakthrough, a new understanding and a new vision of the future. Mm -hmm. uh, not only in terms of technology, but the business sense of how organizations work together. Uh, where we typically have demonstrations at these events so that uh, somebody will bring a kind of a tabletop, you know, glued together, uh, duct tape sort of thing that they've got to show. Uh, but it sparks really, really interesting conversations. So, you know, the car train, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody also talked, there's a town in uh, Germany where they, they created a smart town. Uh, smart lights, smart stop signs, wow. smart everything, mm -hmm. and it manages traffic flow through the city. So it's a little uh, uh, working uh, model mm -hmm. of what a large-scale model could be. So how you roll these out, how you get people to sign up for it, who pays for it, who manages the data, what are the liabilities, you know, how does the insurance work, what are the standards, right. who knows? Wow. But unless we try and start to experiment, yeah. it won't happen. So there's so many points of light and direction that are going on out there. Uh, I'm, I'm just really pumped about it. And, yeah. it, and it, it really comes down to creating and managing the content and, and do that properly and everything else is possible. Mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's, it's fascinating because even that just opened my eyes that we're, we're, we're not talking about isolated little worlds where my world is inside my car and my world is outside in my house. It is all really connected together. It's all one part of, of a, a, a giant ecosystem. And, yeah. and, and we're creating the future right now by, by solving collectively these, these issues. So just an example, if, imagine if you could reduce the following distance of every car, mm -hmm. let's say in, in New York, mm -hmm. by 
uh, bring it down from, you know, what is it, New York, five feet? Anyway, <laughs> 30 feet or 100 yeah. feet, bring yeah. that down to two feet. Yeah. You could probably quadruple the number of vehicles a road could handle safely. Wow. Yeah. You don't need to build infrastructure anymore. Mm -hmm. So you can do that with a network vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of connectivity that happens and driver feedback that happens. Uh, from this sort of technology, let alone the fact that while I'm following two feet, I've got a smart car that's staying on the road all by itself. Right. I can do my texting, yeah. I can watch my movies, I can stay in touch. Right. You know, I can do everything I need to do yeah. at the same time. So it's a, it's a fabulous, uh, fabulous new future. Yeah. One more thing before we leave. Um, when you network a vehicle, it's just, it's just dawning on me that when you network all these vehicles together and you think about what we call the embedded layer, which is really the, the personalization of your data and your experience. You're more than personalizing just the information. Um, you're also personalizing, you, your, your car knows you, knows where you're going, what you're doing, mm -hmm. and, it su and suits everything, really personalizes the entire driving experience to you. Of all these points of light, are there any that are really taking that personalization experience and doing something very interesting with it? Well, there's, there are a couple of ones that came out of one of our conferences. Um, there was one, uh, one group that was looking at, at uh, medical applications. We spend so much time sitting in our cars. Um, it's quite possible now that through a, uh, a seatbelt sensor, we can get heart rate. Cool. So if there's a heart arrhythmia, a heart issue, then somebody can be notified. Uh, we're sitting on the, the, the seat mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And one of the, you're talking about uh, obesity, one mm -hmm. of the challenges is giving people constant feedback about how they're doing on, on weight management. Right. Uh, so if, if, uh, if every day I get a positive feedback saying, hey, Andrew, you're you know, three pounds lighter today, right. well done, keep it up. Yeah. You know, even if it's a voice message, it, it reinforces that I'm on the right track. Right. Uh, there was some talk too about using GPS to determine where I was going for lunch and maybe giving me advice about maybe where else I could go for lunch <laughs> if I was going to the wrong place. So, right. so that kind of personalization is there. Another one that, that came out was um, in a way to try and reduce uh, greenhouse gas and, and fuel consumption was to do with uh, uh, carpooling. So your car knows where you go every day uh, and you have a Facebook account. Uh, my car knows where it goes every day and I have a Facebook account. If we both go to the same places every day and our Facebook accounts show that we're perhaps, um, you know, could get along together, you know, I don't smoke, I don't think you smoke, so, you know, those kinds of things, yeah. um, then maybe Facebook could introduce and say, hey, you guys, your carpool. Yeah. Uh, but all that would happen below the, the scenes, as it were. Mm -hmm. We just know that, you know, Gabor wants to carpool with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, he looks like a cool guy. Sure, why not? <laughs> you know, but yeah. it's, it's done that way. So yeah. those kinds of things start to um, get distilled from the data that's being collected and created. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's some neat things happening out there for sure. I love it, love it. Once again, thank you very much. It's been a fascinating conversation. Great. Very cool. And that's it for another episode of The Embedded. Uh, join us again next time and join the conversation at www.weareembedded.com.